Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. Glad you can join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin in day 53, February 22nd, Deuteronomy chapters 5 to 7, Reviewing God's Demands. Overview. The second and longest of Moses' three sermons begin in chapter 5 and ends in chapter 26. Moses begins by reviewing the Ten Commandments the foundational expression of God's moral requirements for humanity. He then stresses the importance of loving God and passing on his law to succeeding generations. Moses realizes the need for the people of Israel to keep the law and teach future generations God's command that they ought to be what God desires of his children, an obedient people who conquer their foes in the strength God provides. Chapter 5, Restating the Ten Commandments, Laws from Sinai. Chapter 6, Revealing a New Command, Law of Love. Chapter 7, Repeating a Future Hope, Certainty of Victory. Insight, Hear ye, hear ye. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4-9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4-9 begins the celebrated Hebrew Shema. Shema is the Hebrew word meaning listen, which is still recited twice daily by pious Jews. It addresses a singular you in chapter 11. A similar passage addresses a plural you, the community. The strength of the nation is built on collective obedience that stems from a personal relationship with God and obedience to his commands. Insight. Sweet drink and sticky fingers. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3. The description of the promised land as the land flowing with milk and honey, chapter 6, verse 3, pictured a land of prosperity and abundance. A rich supply of milk indicated vast pasture lands. Honey was considered a delicacy. Deuteronomy 7, 13 to 15 describes in even greater detail the Lord's blessings on the land. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Ten Commandments for the Covenant Community. Moses called all the people of Israel together and said, Listen carefully, Israel. Hear the decrees and regulations I am giving you today, so you may learn them and obey them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you, Face to face from the heart of the fire, I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord. For you were afraid of the fire and did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me and I passed his words on to you. And this is what he said. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest, 
dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys, and other livestock, and any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with his strong hand and powerful arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord spoke these words to all of you assembled there at the foot of the mountain. He spoke with a loud voice from the heart of the fire, surrounded by clouds and deep darkness. This was all he said at that time, and he wrote his words on two stone tablets and gave them to me. But when you heard the voice from the heart of the darkness, while the mountain was blazing with fire, all your tribal leaders and elders came to me. They said, Look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice from the heart of the fire. Today we have seen that God can speak to us humans, and yet we live. But now, why should we risk death again? If the Lord our God speaks to us again, we will certainly die and be consumed by this awesome fire. Can any living thing hear the voice of the living God from the heart of the fire as we did and yet survive? Go yourself and listen to what the Lord our God says. Then come and tell us everything he tells you, and we will listen and obey. The Lord heard the request you had made to me, and he said, I have heard what the people said to you, and they are right. Oh, that they would always have hearts like this, that they might fear me and obey all my commands. If they did, they and their descendants would prosper forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents. But you stand here with me so I can give you all my commands, decrees, and regulations. You must teach them to the people so they can obey them in the land I am giving them as their possession. So Moses told the people, you must be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, following his instructions in every detail. Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, a call for wholehearted commitment. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig. 
and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must use only his name. You must not worship any of the gods of neighboring nations. For the Lord your God who lives among you is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of the Lord your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land, just as the Lord said you would. In the future, your children will ask you, What is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations that the Lord our God has commanded us to obey? Then you must tell them, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. The Lord did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give our ancestors. And the Lord our God commanded us to obey all these decrees and fear him so he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands the Lord our God has given us. Deuteronomy chapter 7. The privilege of holiness. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are about to enter and occupy, he will clear away many nations ahead of you. The Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites, these seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. When the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them, make no treaties with them, and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and he will quickly destroy you. This is what you must do. You must break down their pagan altars and shatter their sacred pillars. Cut down their Asherah poles and burn their idols. For you are a holy people who belong to the Lord, your God. All of the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. The Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were the smallest of all nations. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you, and he was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God, he is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him. Therefore, you must obey all these commands, decrees, and regulations I am giving you today. If you listen to these regulations and faithfully obey them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfailing love with you as he promised with an oath to your ancestors. He will love you and bless you, and he will give you many children. He will give fertility to your land and your animals. When you arrive in the land he swore to give your ancestors, you will have large harvests of grain, new wine and olive oil, and great herds of cattle, sheep, and goats. You will be blessed above all the nations of the earth. None of your men or women will be childless, and all your livestock will bear young, and the Lord will protect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases 
you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all your enemies. You must destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. Show them no mercy, and do not worship their gods, or they will trap you. Perhaps you will think to yourselves, how can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? But don't be afraid of them. Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. Remember the great terrors the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it all with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use this same power against all the people you fear. And then the Lord your God will send terror to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. No, do not be afraid of those nations, for the Lord your God is among you, and he is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you little by little. You will not clear them away all at once. Otherwise, the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. But the Lord your God will hand them over to you. He will throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. He will put their kings in your power, and you will erase their names from the face of the earth. No one will be able to stand against you, and you will destroy them all. You must burn their idols in fire, and you must not covet the silver or gold that covers them. You must not take it, or it will become a trap to you, for it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring any detestable objects into your home, for then you will be destroyed. Just like them, you must utterly detest such things, for they are set apart for destruction. My Daily Walk If a God is defined as anything that has the potential to replace God as the focus of your life, what will be the most dangerous God you encounter today at work or school, at home? in your leisure time activities. As Moses repeated God's law to the people, he emphasized one command, you must not have any other God but the Lord, chapter 5, verse 7. Why that command? Because he remembered the gold calf incident at Mount Sinai. He knew the ever-present danger of substituting something for the all-important someone. Moses also knew the religious climate into which the people were about to move, a land filled with idolatry and immorality, which could turn the Israelites from God. Go back over your list of potential gods. Have you allowed one or more to control your life? If so, make a note for yourself of the ones that need to be rooted out. Then invite the one true God to return to his desired and proper place. Idolatry is anything that cools your desire for Christ. Something to think about. That's all for today, my friends. It was great reading with you. Have a great day. God bless, and I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing. Peace.